So I just looked at this as grouping from the beginning. These two terms had a GCF of x to the fourth. The second one had a GCF of x squared. We're left with x minus two in both cases. So remember grouping, we uh, bring down the two GCFs together in the set of parentheses, and we bring down the common factor, x minus two. And then if we look at our GCFs right here, they have a GCF, x, x to the fourth plus x squared. You can take out an x squared, and you're left with uh, x squared plus one, and then of course you still have that x minus two on the end. Um, now, where we're going with this is the fact that the purpose of factoring is so that you can solve equations. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Just leave it like that. Leave it it's okay, but let me continue with my explanation and that'll make more sense. Okay? Um, the purpose is to be able to solve, it's to be able to find all the solutions. So if this were set equal to zero, we're trying to figure out well, what x values will make that equal to zero. Well, the fact of the matter is there's something um, called the rational uh, root theorem that says that your function can have up to um, the, no, uh, the same number of solutions at the highest degree, okay? So this expression right here is a fifth degree, the highest exponent is five. So it has five solutions. Some of those are real solutions, some of those are imaginary solutions. Um, the easiest way to figure out those solutions is to factor it completely. Um, we've done this with quadratics, setting those factors equal to zero, but you can do it with polynomials as well. So obviously we're going to get one solution from here, uh, that x is equal to two. x squared plus one never equals zero when we're talking about real numbers, but remember with the quadratic formula, we talked about that imaginary number i, when you have a negative one to the square root, that's going to come into play right there, and then we've got x squared here that's equal to zero. Um, that's going to be a repeated root, okay? I'll get more into that later. Um, but um, you can tell, if it's in factored form, you can tell how many solutions that you should have by counting um, the exponents. So you get two from this one, two from this one, and one from this one. You get a total of five. So, um, the paper that I just passed out is actually the notes, so you don't have uh, quite as much to write today. So grab that. Sorry, I didn't, I forgot that the warm-up was on there as well. Um, so, we are going to be able to solve polynomial equations. Now, it's going to take a little bit of every technique. We're not really going to use completing the square. Um, I'm sure y'all are grateful for that. But uh, we are going to use factoring, we are going to use the quadratic formula. Okay? Now, this is what I was just saying. The degree of the polynomial equals the total number of solutions. That's real and imaginary. Uh, your first goal is to factor as much as possible, and then usually you're going to need the quadratic formula to find all your solutions. So let's just start uh, with some examples where they are already factored out. Okay? It's already in factored form, so we really don't have to do any work there. All we have to do is set each of our factors equal to zero and solve them for x, and that will give us all of our solutions. First of all, let's talk about how many solutions we should have with this problem. We've got one here, two here, one, one, so we should have five solutions for this equation. So we set each factor equal to zero, so the first one's just x equals zero. The second one, x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. Well, we need to solve that one. Add 5 to move it to the other side. And then take the square root. 5 is not a perfect square. And whenever we take the square root, what do we have to remember? The okay. plus and minus. Okay, the plus and minus. Um, or else we don't get two solutions. We only get one if we don't include the plus or minus. Uh, let's set x minus 2 equal to 0, so that says x equals positive 2, and x plus 2 equal to 0, so that says x is equal to negative 2. So there are our five solutions. It only looks like four, but one of them is plus and minus. Okay? Now, b, it may not look like it's fully factored, but b is fully factored. Okay, x squared minus x plus 1 will not factor any further. 
Um, this is the factored form of x cubed plus 1, if you're curious. Um, so it is fully factored. When we set each of these equal to 0, we get negative 1 is one solution. We've got to get two solutions out of the second part. Well, it does not factor any further, so our only option for solving this, other than graphing, which we're not going to go to that, um, is to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's set up the quadratic formula here. x equals negative b. Well, b is negative 1, so that becomes positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is 1, all over 2 times a, which is again 1. Okay, so let's simplify what's under the square root there. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. We cannot simplify the square root of 3. The only thing that we can do is we do not leave that negative under there. So that comes out as i. So our two solutions, again, it looks like it's 1, but it's really 2 because you have 1 plus i square root of 3 over 2 and 1 minus i square root of 3 over 2. So there are our three solutions. One real, two imaginary. Guess what? Imaginary roots or solutions always come in pairs. Okay, imaginary solutions. You may want to write that out to the side. Imaginary solutions um, up here in what we call conjugate, it's a weird word, um, pairs, but what it means is it's the exact same solution, it just differs by a sign in the middle, okay? Exact same numbers, they just differ by a sign. Yes, ma'am? <coughs> Uh, why would it not be four solutions? Um, because you get one from this one and two from this one. You only count the highest exponent. You don't count that as well. Alright. So we get C. X squared plus 5 times X squared plus 4. Again, those are fully factored because we cannot factor the sum of perfect squares. So when we set both of those equal to 0 and solve, we've got x squared is equal to negative 5. Take the square root. Two things to remember. Number 1, plus or minus. Number 2, it's a negative under the square root, so that comes out as i. So two of the solutions are positive i square roots of 5 and negative i square roots of 5. For the other one, we've got x squared is equal to negative 4. Take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to positive and negative. Um, 4 is a perfect square. So we will express that as 2i. The square root of 4 is 2, but it was negative 4, so we've got to put an i. <coughs> Bottom column, I'm sorry? It, it, like, what the character numbers to equal to. <laughs> all right, uh, last one. This one's pretty simple, straightforward. Just set all of those equal to 0, solve for x. So we get positive 2, we get... Uh, negative 2, we get positive 3, and we get negative 3. All 
All right. Let's take it up a step where we need to put it in the form um, so that it can be solved. Okay. So example E there, x to the fifth plus 5x cubed minus 14x is equal to 0. We've got to factor this fully. So we need to start by factoring out a GCF. All of these terms have a common factor of x. So when we take out an x, we're left with x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 14. And I'm going to keep that equal to 0 running through because it is an equation, so I need to keep it. All right. Now, x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 14. Remember, we factored this quadratic form. Um, x squared times x squared is going to give us x to the fourth. What multiplies to give us 14 and adds to give us 5? Well, that would be positive 7 and negative 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. 7 times negative 2 is 14. So that is now fully factored. We've got x equals 0 is one of our solutions. x squared plus 7, so that means x squared is equal to negative 7. Take the square root. x is equal to plus or minus. 7 is not a perfect square. Take out the negative as i and leave the 7 under the radical. So there are our second and third solutions. And then finally, x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. So x squared is equal to positive 2. So our fourth and fifth solutions are the plus and minus square root of 2. And it was degree 5, so we were expecting 5 solutions. Alright, let's look at F. We have x to the 6th minus 28x cubed plus 27 is equal to 0. So this is another quadratic form. Except this time it is x cubed that we're going to multiply together to give us x to the sixth. And let's see here. Negative 27 times negative 1 gives us positive 27. And when we add those, we get negative 28. These are, the, both of these can be factored Further, because x cubed minus 27 is the difference of perfect cubes. Okay, so we've got x and 3, so x squared, 3x and 9. Soap, same, opposite, always positive. That is factored fully. Let's do the same thing with x cubed minus 1. So x and 1 x squared, x, and 1. Soap, same, opposite, always positive. So, two of these solutions are going to be very straightforward. Um, the other four are going to require the quadratic formula. But we're just going to have to do it twice. Okay? Each quadratic formula gives us two answers. So x minus 3 is equal to 0. That says one of our solutions is x equals 3. If we plug 3 in for x into that original equation, we will get 0. Uh, let me go ahead and do the other linear factor. x minus 1 is equal to 0. So positive 1 is also a solution. If we plug positive 1 into that original equation, it will give us 0. Let's do the quadratic formula with the first one here, x squared plus 3x plus 9. So quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. 